Here is an example with a single loop circuit. So we have a circuit that contains two batteries with internal resistance and two external resistances. And we want to know what's the current in the circuit, what is the power used by the resistors, and what is the power provided by or used by the batteries. And finally, what is the potential difference VAC? The first thing to do is always to copy the diagram. Or if you're doing it on a test, get ready to scribble all over the diagram that you're being given. And the first thing I'll do to my diagram is decide which way I think the current is going. In this case, since there's a 12 volt battery and a 6 volt battery, it seems logical that the current should flow out of the positive side of the 12 volt battery and into the 6 volt battery, which means that if the 6 volt battery is a rechargeable battery, it's getting charged. The current is flowing into it. Once I've done that, my personal idiosyncrasy is to write down which sides of the resistors have high potential and which sides of the resistor have low potential. That helps me make less sign mistakes when I do my calculations. In a resistor, current flows from high potential to low potential. So as I go around the circuit, I place H on the side where the current comes in and an L on the side when the current comes out of the resistors. The high and low potential across the EMFs is determined by the chemical reaction inside. So the long side, the plus side, is always high potential, and the small side, the negative side, is always low potential. There are many correct ways of figuring out the current in the circuit. I'm going to use a loop rule because that's a technique that we're going to use for the multi-loop circuits. You probably know that Kirchhoff's loop rule states that the sum of voltages around a circuit should be equal to zero. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. It always helps when you're using a loop rule to write down in which direction you're going to be adding the voltages. So I've added the little arrow with an L. Starting at point D and going clockwise, the first voltage we come across is the voltage across the 470 ohm resistor. And the voltage across a resistor is R times I, so 470 multiplied by I. Then that voltage is negative because we're going from high potential to low potential, or downhill if you like. Then we go from high potential to low potential across the 6 volt EMF, so that's minus 6, from high to low over the internal resistance of the battery, minus 6i, then minus 560 times i, minus 4i in the internal resistance of the 12 volt battery, and across the 12 volt battery we go from the place of low potential to high potential, so plus 12. When we simplify this equation, we get minus 1040i plus 6, which means that i is equal to 6 over 1040, and that is 5.77 milliamperes. Now let's figure out the power used by the resistors. Power in an electric circuit is given by the voltage across an element multiplied by the current through it. For resistors, we also know that the voltage through the resistor is given by Ohm's law, current multiplied by resistance. And so we can combine these two equations for the resistors and say that power is equal to I squared times R. For the 560 Ohm resistor, the power is 5.77 milliamperes squared multiplied by 560, and that is 18.6 milliwatts. For the 470 ohm resistor, the power is 5.77 milliamperes squared multiplied by 470, and that is 15.6 milliwatts. Now as I continue the problem, I'm going to leave the diagram on top of the picture, and I'll keep going and I'll show you what the two pages look like at the end. So the next thing is to find the power um, for the batteries. The 12 volt battery is providing power. And we can't use I squared R because a battery is not a resistor, as you may have noticed. So we have to use the voltage across the battery multiplied by the current. 
If we go from C to D, the voltage across the battery is given by minus 4 times I. That's the voltage across the internal resistance. And across the internal resistance, we're going from high to low potential, which justifies the negative sign, plus 12, because across the EMF, we are going from low potential to high potential. We now take that voltage and multiply by the current. So minus 4 times 5.77 milliamperes plus 12, and that whole thing multiplied by 5.77 milliamperes is 69.1 milliwatt. Now let's figure out how much power is used by the 6 volt battery. If we add the voltage from B to A across the 6 volt battery, we get 6I plus 6. We count the voltage across the internal resistance of the battery as positive because from B to A, we're going from low potential to high potential. Well, let's multiply this by the current now. 6 times 5.77 milliamperes plus 6, then the whole thing multiplied by 5.77 milliamperes is 34.8 milliwatts of power used. And remember, we know that the 6 volt battery uses power because the current is flowing into its positive terminal. We have a great opportunity to check our work. We know that the power provided by the 12 volt battery should be equal to the power used by all the other elements in the circuit. The 69.1 milliwatts provided are indeed equal to 18.6 milliwatts plus 15.6 milliwatts plus 34.8 milliwatts used. Awesome! Finally, the potential difference VAC is the potential at point VA minus the potential at point VC. So we will consider our point VC to be our initial point, our point VA to be our final point, and to calculate VAC, we will add up all the potential differences along our path from C to A. Going from C to D to A, first we meet the internal resistance of the 12 volt battery, so minus 4I, then the EMF of the 12 volt battery, plus 12, then the 470 ohm resistor minus 470i. We get minus 474 ohms multiplied by 5.77 milliamperes plus 12 volts equals 9.26 volts. Let's calculate the potential from C to A, but this time going through point B. Across the 506 ohm resistor, we go from low potential to high potential. So plus 560i, and then plus 6i across the internal resistance of the 6 volt battery, and plus 6 across the EMF of the 6 volt battery. 566 ohms multiplied by 5.77 milliamperes plus 6 volts is... 9.26 volts. Awesome! And finally, here is the full handwritten solution over two pages. Spread the joy of physics!